Susan here. Okay, I'm going to answer a question for one of my patrons about dart manipulation and excess of the dart and all of that, and that's what's next. comes from Carmen, one of my newest patrons. Thank you for coming on board, Carmen. I'm so excited that you're a part of this, this platform with me. And her question is about dart manipulation. She says that she, she understands the, the basics of dart manipulation, either the pivoting or slash method. But what she's not getting and not understanding is that which of the darts do you cut off the excess um, and which ones you don't. All right, so here is the sloper. This is the front sloper. And this is a one dart sloper. And with the one dart sloper, um, as you can see, it's quite a large dart. So that excess is quite large um, as extra fabric or extra whatever you're making it out of to be folded inside of the garment. So what she's asking is which ones do you cut out and which ones don't you? Let me show you that on the flat now. Let's get there on the flat. To demonstrate this point, um, I not only want to explain, you know, uh, which darts get cut off, I want to show you which, where the darts actually get folded. It is very important to understand that, probably more important than which darts get cut off. In order to do that, I'm going to show you three different locations of the bash and spread method. I'm going to show you the tip of the neckline, on the dart movement. I'm going to show you the straight side dart and I'm going to show you this one here, a bottom waist dart, the basic one dart sloper and moving that one dart to those three locations. First thing you're going to need pattern making paper, pencils, paper scissors, a ruler, eraser, push pins, cork board. All right, let's get started. Trace the one dart sloper here. As you can see, the one dart sloper that I've traced from here. This is the first movement I'm going to do, which is the tip of the neckline, the center front, and the tip of the neckline. The second one is going to be the side dart to the apex, and the third one is going to keep this dart here at the waistline. So the first thing I'm going to do is take one of my paper pieces. I'm going to put this onto the paper piece like that and I'm going to draw my center front line always. Let's get that straight, straight here. First, I'm gonna push pin this down, taking one of the markings from my center front and drawing a line straight. I'm gonna put my sloper that's cut out in pattern making paper along that portion right there. I'm gonna push pin it down just like that. I have one here at the apex and I'm gonna push pin it here as well, everywhere. So this dart, we are going to move to right here on the tip. So I've already drawn it out, actually, and let me slash it again. So I'm gonna take my little tape that I have here, like this, I'm gonna open this up so you can see, and now this is open, just like that. Once that is open, I'm gonna close this guy down here. I'm just gonna fold it together. So when this now meets together like that, I'm gonna shift it over to that center front line. You always have to have it on the center front line. I'm gonna tack it down just like that. Once I get it to my center front line, tack it on both sides of this dart and wherever you need to tack it, just like that. After I have enough tacks on this, or push pins, I'm gonna trace around this new sloper. So now I have an opening here. I'm gonna trace that opening very gently with my pencil and just trace that opening. I'm gonna trace around the neckline, just like that, the shoulder, armhole, side seam and waist. We've closed this one on the bottom. Now I can take the push pins out. 
move this over and now this is always the apex very important to have and we have successfully closed this waist dart and now we have here at the neckline okay that's the first move I'm going to put seam allowance around each one of these pieces I'll show you on this one and then I'll do the other three first I'm going to put a half of an inch seam allowance on the center front just like that necklines always get a quarter so I'm just going to make little parallel markings in uh, around this neckline in order to give me seam allowance for the neckline the shoulder is a straight line we want to make sure we put our half of an inch seam allowance on that of an inch seam allowance I'm just using my ruler and making markings parallel again around the curve of the um, armhole just like that and once I get these markings I will cut this out and we'll show you all three here's the side seam put a half of an inch seam allowance on the side seam half of an inch seam allowance on the um, bottom or waistline of this bodice sloper once we get to all the darts each dart's going to have my half moon that i always talk about i'm going to take these push pins out i'm going to go ahead and cut on the cutting line which is this line that i just drew and i'll be right back here we are this is where the moment of truth is going to be on you know what we need to do with the excess on these darts in these three different locations i'm going to take the first one first and let you know that all darts on the top part of the sloper uh, whether it's the neckline whether it's the tip the neckline the shoulder all the excess has to always go towards the center front so in order to do that you have to fold the one that's closest to the center front first said we never put the dart ending at the apex always has to be a space so in between these lines I'm going to put a dot one inch from the apex so right there in the center that's going to be my new dart legs I'm going to put my new dart legs to that line just like that once I get that I'm going to fold back that side where the dart leg is to the dart point and I'm going to move all the excess towards what's this concave at towards the center front look what happens as soon as I do that you've got this dart excess way over the center front what do we do with all that there are two things you can do with that you can either cut it just like this where the excess is going to meet that center front line and I'm going to cut here also around the neckline just like that and when you open it you're going to have this excess this excess will be absorbed in the seam here it will be cleaned here and cleaned here or you can do the other thing that i think is very important when you have the excess going too far over and that is cutting out the dart and giving a half of an inch seam allowance from the new dart legs on just like that inside and cutting off all this extra fabric inside so I'm going to cut that out here with my half of an inch seam allowance just like that once I do that you have less fabric to deal with it still has to be turned this way it still has to concave where the excess goes towards the center front but at least now you don't have all that fabric that's underneath there so those are the two ways you can do this center dart center tip dart on the neckline that's when cutting it out the excess is very very important you give your half of an inch seam allowance you're going to have to clean finish this inside but all your darts always go towards the center front okay that's the first one let's do the second one the second one we have here is the dart on the side of the bodice okay let me just go ahead and tack this down real quick just so you can see all darts either here at the armhole 
or the side seam, all the excess has to go down. That is the proper way to have all the excess of your dart. That means you're gonna to have to take this one and fold it up there. First, we have the apex here, apex. We're gonna to have to go one inch inside. Remember, we need to have our new dart point. So one inch inside of that dart, we're gonna put a new dart point, dart point. We're gonna make new dart legs, meaning from the tip here to the new dart point is one leg, and here to the new dart point is another leg. We have that. All right, now that we have that, since everything has to go down, we're gonna fold back the bottom part of that dart first, just like this. And we're gonna carry that bottom one. Let me just go ahead and tack this down. Maybe that'll be helpful. The bottom part of this dart, I'm gonna concave it and carry it over to the top. That forces the excess downward. It's not that large of a dart, but it, it's still large enough that could be a problem in some silky fabrics or fine fabrics. So when you have that, what you wanna do, you pin it together just like that, and I'm going to take the excess off here at the side seam. Just gonna cut that excess off like that. So now when I take this pin out, you're gonna see this dart excess here on the side, right? If you think it's too much, if you think it's a silky fabric and you don't want all that excess, you can also take this dart and you can remove it. Um, the excess by putting a half of an inch seam allowance from the new dart legs, just like that, on this one. Now, when you cut it out, you're still going to have the excess going down. Remember that. I'm just going to tack this down again. You're still going to have the excess going down, right? and you see it inside, that's all gonna to have to be clean finish. But if it is a, a knit or it is a silky sheer, almost sheer fabric, it is very important to cut all that excess out. You don't wanna see it. And that is number two. Let's do number three. Number three is your traditional dart here at the waistline. We're gonna tack this down again, just like that. We need to have any dart that's here on the bottom of this waistline go towards the center front. Here's the center front. In order to do that, let's go ahead first. This is the apex. This has already been lowered because this was already lowered on the sloper. So here's an inch down. So this is the new dart point. Dart point. Okay. We're gonna take this leg of the dart. I'm gonna fold it back first, just like this. And when I do that and I concave it, the excess then now goes, as you can see, towards the center front, just like that, right? And it is a fairly big dart, but if it's in a woven fabric, you can keep it as is. Again, you can just go ahead and pin that together. I'm gonna close this and pin it with just a large pin. I'm gonna cut the excess of that dart here on the waistline, and you can see it, it's quite large, right? It's not too bad, but if this was a knit or this was a semi-sheer fa fabric, you too then would wanna cut that out. So then we would just take the dart legs, again, making a half of an inch seam allowance like that, inside of the dart itself, cut out all that excess, just like that, and we have that now. All right, here we are with the demonstration on all the three locations that I wanted you to know. The one here, the most important to know that you probably always will cut out the excess would be the one on the tip of the neckline. Here is the excess cut out, so it's nice and clean inside. It is very important to either cut it out or fold it towards the center front. If it's a sheer fabric or a knit fabric, most most times you will want to cut that excess out. On the second one here, on the side dart, we cut it out only if you really have a sheer fabric 
or a knit fabric. Otherwise, it is perfectly okay for it to fold downwards and be sewn into the side seam to secure it. The third location, which is here at the waistline, if it is a very large start, um, chances are you might want to cut it out but it is also not completely necessary to cut it out unless it's a sheer fabric or some kind of a, a thin knit fabric. So here are the three locations and the answer to your question is has to do with the fabrication and how large that dart actually ends up. But these are the three main locations that I wanted to show you. I hope that answers your question. And we're done with this lesson. Okay, Carmen, we finished that question for you. I hope it makes sense. I hope the demonstration helped you a lot. And get your questions prepared for next month. And I'll see you there. Thank you. Bye-bye.